What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Um, getting into this episode of Days of Our Lives, I enjoyed this episode. Um, Ben and Sierra, <laughs> listen, I, I like them as a couple. I think they're hot as a couple. I really do. But I don't see how this relationship is going to last too much longer. Like, I really don't. Let me tell you this. I feel like Sierra had a lot of great points that she made today about Ben and working for Stefan. She had a great point. You know, she brought up a lot of good points. Um, But at the same time, who else is going to hire Ben? You know, Stefan hired him when nobody else in that town would. I mean, it's not easy for this guy to get a job. You know, he's known, obviously, as a murderer and other things. So how is he supposed to get a job? You know what I mean? How? Most of the people in that town, Sierra is related to. You know what I mean? And none of them are willing to hire him. He tried. You know, he tried to get a job at Doug's place and all the other stores in Horton Square and none of them were willing to hire him. Victor obviously would never hire him. So where else is he supposed to turn to? You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, him kidnapping Gabby, that was a little messed up. But at the same time, he just does security for Stefan. That's pretty much all he does. Um, I, I just don't see this relationship working. Hope is going to constantly be gunning for Ben. So I don't see this relationship going too, too far. I mean, obviously, they're more than likely going to get back together. And well, they haven't officially broken up. But with Hope constantly interfering in their relationship, trying to do whatever she can to lock Ben up, I don't see how this relationship is going to go to distance. I honestly don't. And of course, Stefan got arrested for treason um, because of that whole bionic eye. You know, he was using that to, you know, Steve to spy and stuff like that. Um, Hope basically tried to throw Stefan a lifeline. She basically told Stefan she could help him out of the situation if he throws Ben under the bus. But of course, Stefan wasn't going to snitch on Ben, of course. My whole thing is, this is not, Hope is a police commissioner. You know what I'm saying? This whole treason thing is a federal crime. So there's no, Hope has no cards to play. How is she supposed to help Stefan? She has no, no ace up her sleeve to get him out of this mess. They have enough evidence against Stefan, so there's nothing she can do to help him. She's only a police commissioner in a small town, so how the hell would she be able to help him out of a federal crime? That's a serious crime. You know what I mean? Hope is bluffing. She ain't got she she has no resources to help him. And she knows it. And I think Stefan knows it too. That's why he ain't trying to help her. And besides, he's loyal. He's not gonna throw Ben under the bus for helping him out. You know, Ben was only taking orders from him. You know what I mean? Um and he already know. If he snitched on Ben, Ben could turn around and snitch on him and basically tell them, well, he got the order from Stefan. So either way, it's not gonna do him any good to snitch on Ben anyway. Um, so Hope, she is desperate to lock Ben up, like seriously desperate. I don't blame her in a way, but at the same time, it is coming off personal. So I do feel like she's, it's a conflict of interest because she's way too close to this. I mean, you're investigating a guy who's dating your daughter. You should be thrown off whatever case there is. There is no case, honestly. She has nothing on Ben. She just went to Sierra's apartment just to spark an argument between the two of them because she knew she didn't have no evidence of the kidnapping to arrest Ben. So she at least wanted to bring it to Sierra's attention so it could cause some type of fight so Sierra would break up with him. I just, I mean, with Sierra, I, I also don't feel like she's mature enough for a real relationship. I don't think she is. She just has this immaturity about her. Now, mind you, like I said, she brought up a lot of great points against Ben, but at the same time... She has to kind of understand his point of view on it, too. I mean, it's not like he's running around trying to kill people or harm people. But what other job can he get? You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like you got to put yourself in his shoes. Sierra doesn't have to really worry about work. Everybody around her or related to her are pretty either rich or well off financially. So by extension, it makes her well off. You know what I mean? Plus, she has a fat trust fund from Victor. So she doesn't really have to worry about money. I'm just saying. Speaking of Victor... So he got a visit from Xander. Victor is so rude to this man. <laughs> I He just treats Xander like dirt underneath his shoe, like that he just can't seem to wipe off. He just cannot stand him. 
But Xander came back with a vengeance. He basically has some information, thanks to Eve, from Demira Enterprises. Enough information that could actually help Titan recover. Because, you know, Titan is going through a shitstorm right about now. Thanks to Sonny and Chad, the company is in a whole lot of mess. You know what I mean? And Victor probably just don't know how to fix it at this point. But, of course, Xander has the keys to fix that problem. Whatever information he dug up thanks to Eve from Demir Enterprises is going to actually help Titan recover. Of course, it comes with uh, some strings attached. Xander wants respect from Victor. He also wants to live in the mansion. And he wants the CEO title at Titan. I don't blame him. To me, that's not asking a whole lot. It's really not, especially if he has the keys to help you fix your company. You know what I mean? That's actually a small price to pay. It's not like he is asking you for millions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? It's a very small price to pay. And it's not like Victor, who else can Victor name as CEO of the company? Victor's retired. He's not trying to go back to working at the company again. He's enjoying retirement with Maggie and stuff like that. Who else is he going to, re- you know, who else is he going to put in, in the CEO chair? Sonny obviously is in no position to go back right now because of Leo. Brady's an idiot and he's no longer working at Titan. Justin, no. So who else you going to get? I always like Xander because I feel like Xander is a young version of Victor in a way. He's just a little bit more kooky. You know, he's a little bit more crazier. Um, But Xander definitely should be leading that family. Definitely. Xander should be leading that family. Definitely. I always felt like that. I say it all the time because he has the makings of being a real leader. You know, he's just ruthless enough to run that family and to run that company. I never, you know, all he wants is respect from Victor. That's all he's ever wanted from Victor was approval because Victor treats Brady, Sonny, Justin. He treats all of them and they're all, you know, grandson and nephews. He treats them with all like a lot of respect and love. And, you know, he's always got their back whenever they're in trouble. He does what he can to help. He's never like that with Xander, and I think that's what always frustrated Xander was the fact that Victor just never gave a shit about the kid, you know, ever. And I think he's hurt by that, and he's upset. He's always been upset about it. So, of course, he has leverage now to, you know, swing things his way. Maggie is pissed. (laughs) When Maggie heard that Xander was going to be moving into the mansion, Maggie was not happy about it. She's like, hell to the no. Um... I'm pretty sure Victor and Maggie are tired of all these house guests. Like, I'm pretty sure they're they're about sick of it at this point. First, you know, they had Chad living with them. At one point, they have Eve living with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pretty sure they're just tired of all these damn guests. Like, just barging their way into the mansion. Now they got to deal with Leo. Now they're dealing with with Xander. Maggie is, is, she, she's sick of this shit. She like, no. (laughs) Victor can't do nothing really about it at this moment. So Maggie, you're going to have to live with it. I'm just saying. Maggie is looking gorgeous, let me just say. For her age, Maggie looks stunning. Um, And of course, she wants to help Jennifer in any way that she can with getting Jack back. Eve is a desperate little vixen. I love Eve, though. I know some people can't stand Eve. For me, I love sometimes rooting for villains. Only if they're rootable and entertaining. You know what I'm saying? Eve is somewhat entertaining to me. Like, she's a hellcat. Like, she was just a horny little she-devil trying to get Jack in the bed and stuff. And she basically told Jennifer that she's going to become Mrs. Jack Devereaux again. Jennifer better work fast. I'm just saying, if you want him to get his memory back and come back to the family, you better work quick. Because Eve is stepping up her game. She's going to do whatever she can to get Jack and to marry him and... You know, she's already trying to seduce him. So Jennifer knows she's running up against the clock right now. She's time is running out. So you got to hurry it up, because if not, your husband, ex-husband going to be married to his other ex-wife and you might not get him back. So you might want to hurry it up. I wish Jennifer was smack the hell out of Eve one good time. Because I'm so sick of Eve just coming, barging up in her house, trying to talk down to her all the time. Jennifer, knock her on her ass one good time. That's all you need to do. Show her who boss. Like, stop letting her run all over you. You know what I'm saying? Like, Eve is aggravating. Like, (laughs) um, that scene with Kayla and Jack, that, you know, I was looking forward to this confrontation. I really was between her and Jack because I always wanted to see how it was going to happen. 
But, you know, they basically sat down and talked about, um, you know, the past and how she used to be married to Jack for a short amount of time and how she had an affair with Steve and, you know, his brother. And then she told him about the rape, about him raping her. Um, you know, she's just filling him in like, um, you know, what happened in his past and stuff, because he did tell Eve that he wanted answers. Well, he's getting the answers and, you know, he's getting the answers he might not like, which is the ugly side that he used to have back in the day. Um, I'm glad that they sat down and had that talk. You know, she just reassured him, you know, you you changed your ways. You became a better husband, a better father. You know what I mean? Just filling him in on all the things that happened over the years especially between the two of them. So I, I actually enjoyed that conversation. I thought it was a cool conversation. Um, I can't wait for Jack to get his memory back. Jack is going to raise some hell when he get that memory back because Eve, you going down. That's all I can tell you. You're going to be in a world of trouble once he find out what you did. So anyway, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I will see you all later. Have a great day. Peace.